What if all the things you thought you knew about God were false? An old religion, a secret book that was almost lost to history, has the power to change everything. The Gospel of Judas is not only controversial, but when you think about what it says, it's downright scary. This old writing says that the God we all know and love, the one in the Bible, might not be good at all. In fact, this story points to something so shocking that it's easy to see why the early church tried to hide it. Dolores Cannon used hypnosis to access memories of past lives and share lessons from people who lived with Jesus. In her book, They Walked with Jesus, she writes about Jesus' life and teachings from a different point of view, revealing details and events that aren't found in standard religious texts. Like the Gospel of Judas, this book challenges the stories we've heard before and gives us new ways to look at spiritual truths. Take a look at the year 180 CE. It's still early in the Christian church, but already there are disagreements among groups about what is true and what is false. In the middle of all this, a church father named St. Irenaeus writes a book called Against Heresies. In it, he attacks the Gospel of Judas as dangerous and even immoral. This wasn't any old religion. The ideas in that document were directly at odds with those that were becoming the mainstay of mainstream Christianity. From this Gospel, it looked like everything people thought they knew about God, Jesus, and the Twelve Followers was not only wrong but also upside down. You may know Matthew, Mark, Luke and John as Gospels, but the Gospel of Judas was different. This Gospel doesn't show Judas Iscariot as the worst traitor. Instead, it shows him in a totally different way. The book says that Judas was the only follower who really got Jesus. Even more shocking is that Jesus is said to have told Judas that the God the other followers worshipped, the God of the Bible, wasn't a good God, but a bad one, a ruler of chaos, or the devil in disguise. Christians have known for a very long time that God is good, Jesus is his Son, and the disciples were his true servants. But the Gospel of Judas shows that this whole basis is built on a lie. This isn't just a small change to the story, it's a full turnaround. It's like discovering that the good guys in your best story were really the bad guys the whole time. However, why would this message be so very different? Some experts think that the Gospel of Judas was a way for people to rebel against how powerful the early church was becoming. By the second century, church leaders were starting to make their power stronger by saying it came straight from what the first disciples taught. But the Gospel of Judas rips that authority apart by saying that those followers worshipped a false god, led people astray, and did horrible things like sacrificing people. Not only was this message controversial, it was also harmful to the early church's growing power. That's probably why it was buried, hidden, and almost forgotten. It was too powerful and too much of a threat to the way things were. It was hidden for almost 1,700 years, until it was found again in the 1970s. Before Christianity, people had a lot of different ideas about who Jesus was, what his teaching meant, and who was in charge. The Gospel of Judas goes against what most people believe and questions the idea that what we've been told is the whole truth. We can see that history isn't always as simple as it seems when we know this. The main Gospels only tell one version of the story of Jesus and his friends. This version was chosen over others, such as the Gospel of Judas. That doesn't mean it's the only or even the best version, though. Because there is a Gospel, we have to ask hard questions and consider the chance that the truth may be more complicated, multifaceted and even scary than we thought. The Gospel of Judas gives a very different picture of this notorious person. Judas is not the bad guy in the story. Instead, he is the only follower who really gets Jesus. This story says that Judas wasn't just a follower. He was also a friend of Jesus's, who he trusted with the most important plans of God. 
And these weren't just any secrets. They were revelations that could make the other followers question everything they thought they knew. In this story, Judas isn't acting badly or out of greed. He is actually a very important part of a divine story that only he and Jesus can understand. Judas was picked by Jesus for a special job that needed him to betray his master. Not because he was dishonest, but because it was part of a bigger plan for the universe. Judas seems to be the only one who is strong enough to carry this information and what it means. We can get a hint from the Gospel of Judas that the other followers may have been worshipping a false god that was really a bad force. On the other hand, Judas saw the truth. Jesus was not the son of this false god, but a messenger from a higher, stranger place. Judas was different from the others because he knew who Jesus was, which made him the only one who could understand his deepest lessons. This picture of Judas goes against the most important things we learn in school. Judas stops being the student who failed and starts being the one who understood what Jesus and God were really like. He is the hero of the story because he saw the truth when no one else did. But that's not the end of the Gospel of Judas. It goes on to say that Judas's part was much more complicated and evil than we thought. Jesus calls Judas the 13th demon, which is a very important name. People in the past thought that the number 13 meant chaos and revolt. By calling Judas the 13th demon, the Gospel suggests that there is a deep link between Judas and the chaotic forces of the world. It's even possible that Judas was meant to be an agent of these forces. But one thing is for sure. The Gospel of Judas makes us see Judas not only as a traitor, but also as a very important person. Not because he is greedy or bad, but because his deeds are part of a bigger, more mysterious story. Even though he was flawed, Judas was the only disciple who was closest to the truth. The popular Gospels didn't include this truth because it was too dangerous and controversial. Most Christians believe that God is the ultimate source of goodness, that he made the world, and that he is the Father of Jesus Christ. However, the Gospel of Judas gives a very different view. It makes the point that the God that the Twelve followers worshipped, and by extension most Christians worship, might actually be a fake, a bad person pretending to be God. The text says that the real God is something very different, much more mysterious and very different from the being that the followers and later the church came to worship. This idea of a lying God isn't just a small change to the plot. It's the whole opposite of what usually happens. The Gospel of Judas says that the being who made the world made people, and expected worship and obedience isn't the loving father figure that many people think he is. Instead, the Gospel of Judas shows this being as a cosmic trickster and a chaotic master who tricks people into worshipping him while hiding what God is really like. Jesus is shown in this Gospel as a messenger from a greater power who was sent to tell those who can understand the truth, in this case, Judas. This text says that the other students can't see the truth. People worship a God that is not only not real, but also very bad. This God loves to lie and keep people from realizing who they are and what they can do. I find it very scary to think that the God of the Bible might be a trickster. It calls religion into question by saying that everything could be wrong from how the world was made to what the church teaches. The Gospel of Judas doesn't just hint at this possibility, it says it outright. It makes Jesus the one who can see through the trick, and Judas is the only follower who can understand this dark truth. This idea of God lying to people isn't just found in the Gospel of Judas. Other Gnostic texts support this idea, showing the Creator God, also called the Demiurge, as a flawed or evil being that traps souls in the physical world. The true divine in these works 
is a more general, unknowable force, something that goes beyond the physical and our normal idea of God. But the Gospel of Judas goes one step further by connecting this thought to the story of Jesus and his disciples. It seems to say that the main ideas of Christianity have been wrong from the start, because they are based on worshipping a being that is either not a god at all or the personification of evil. This news is meant to shock, anger and force believers to think again about what they believe. The Gospel of Judas doesn't just talk about the idea of divine deception. It's a core theme that runs through the whole story. It is clear that these Gospels show us a world of ideas that a lot of us have never heard of before. This old book not only gives a different point of view, but it also completely changes what some of the most important people in religious history did. It has so many extreme ideas that they were kept secret for almost 2,000 years. These ideas question everything from what God is like to the very basis of Christianity. The stories we've heard as children and the ideas that shape how we see the world are only one version of the truth. These stories have been passed down from generation to generation, and those in power have often changed them. The Gospel of Judas is a powerful reminder that along the way, other opinions and stories are often shut down or forgotten. If this in-depth look at the Gospel of Judas and its mind-boggling reveals has made you curious or changed the way you see things, please consider giving me a donation. Please click the Super Thanks button below. With your help, I can keep telling you these stories that make you think and finding the secret truths in history. What's really interesting is the thought that Judas, who was long thought to be the worst criminal, might have been the one who really understood Jesus. Instead of being a symbol of betrayal, Judas could be seen as a wise man who was ready to face a terrible truth for a better good. This new way of looking at things makes us think about how we see not only Judas, but also the whole story of good and evil, right and wrong. The idea of divine deception, that the God that millions of people serve could be a fake, may be the most disturbing and thought-provoking thing about this gospel. People are forced to think that their ideas about God might be wrong and that the truth might be much more complicated and mysterious than they ever thought. This idea goes to the heart of faith and makes us question everything we thought we knew. The Gospel of Judas wants us to go on a trip, a journey into the unknown where we will have to face hard truths and think about ideas that go against everything we believe. For this trip to work, we need to keep an open mind and think about the chance of finding historical secrets. Gnosticism, which thrived in the early centuries of Christianity, offered a very different perspective on the nature of the divine and the universe. At its core, Gnosticism taught that the material world was created by a flawed or evil god, often referred to as the Demiurge, and that true spiritual enlightenment came from escaping this material trap and connecting with a higher, more abstract divine realm. In today's world, where more and more people are exploring alternative spiritual paths, the themes found in the Gospel of Judas are surprisingly relevant. Many are drawn to the idea of questioning established doctrines and seeking personal, experiential knowledge of the divine. This Gospel's emphasis on hidden truths and the idea that mainstream beliefs may be misleading speaks to a growing desire for spiritual authenticity and a deeper understanding of the mysteries of existence. This message doesn't just tell a different story. It also asks us to change the way we think. It makes us want to question the stories we've been told, find the voices that have been lost, and be brave enough to think that the truth might be something completely different. This is the story that will live on, even though it was almost lost to history. It continues to shock, push, and inspire people who are brave enough to ask the hard questions. Even though we choose what we believe, 
the process of learning, questioning and looking for shapes our outlook and our place in it. Thanks for seeing. Until then, stay interested and keep discovering what you don't know.